um, where the, the, the cloud is in the image, we do the same to two others, and in that way we can find where the bomb landed, that cloud that we've seen before, now we know where it is, and we look at satellite images before and after and establish where it has landed. Um, we see also other things in this satellite image. For example, we see uh, a bomb cloud, a second after explosion, just up of it, here. This is a rare thing to see in a satellite image. The satellite will come once a day, at best. Uh, so now what we're doing uh, is trying to look at when those three images of the same bomb clouds were taken. And helpfully, we have a little bit of shadow in one of the images, and we can correct the lens distortion and build a 3D model of that place. We have a 3D model, and uh, we can run a sun simulation on it, a very simple technique that exists on every sort of CAD software, um, running the, uh, simulating the sun until the digital shadow matches the physical shadow and we can establish the exact timing. And now we know that the three videos that we have are at the same time. Now we can move along those videos, see if we see another cloud, and start triangulating <coughs> onwards from that. Here um, we are again looking for that cloud that we saw. We saw it on the satellite image. Satellite image has the time stamp on it and now we're trying to look for that image in on from ground images i have to skip because and we we find it so this bomb that you see <coughs> from the ground is the same bomb that you see from the air and uh, we're able to measure it confirm and now we know this is 1139 so we start having we, we are able now to timestamp all the images by syncing up the sky um, and we are able to start constructing uh, a timeline simply based on, on the cloud formation. And um, of course, after building the timeline from the sky, we are now starting to look at the earth, at the ground, what happened to civilian on the ground and we interview uh, a number of them and we are able to time what is happening to them. Of course, any civilian that is experiencing such trauma, traumatic attack, um, the sense of time is no longer there and somehow you can, you're able to bring back the time of events uh, in this manner. Um, an architectural model help us locate those ground images. Uh, we build a model of the entire Rafah, a city in the south of Gaza, uh, and manage to move from one image to the next. Now, you're going to see something quite disturbing now. We are able to capture the bombs uh, a split second before they hit the ground. Um, this, these bombs killed 16 um, civilians, a member of a single family in there. And um, the lawyers of Amnesty asked us if we could identify that bomb. Now, how can you? I mean, we want to have it hanging there forever, rather than landing on the ground. We put, though, the, the image into the model. Uh, we're able to measure the extent of the frame. So we know the, the image is 150 meters across, because we know from which building to which building it goes, at the cone with, where, where, the, where the bombs are. And then we simply measure the bombs in the air before they landed, and we go through uh, catalogs and, and we identify the exact bomb that they threw. So this is the one-ton bomb, and that became the sort of the headline of the UN report, a one-ton bomb in the middle of a residential area. Um, so here you see how the model becomes a means of locating witness testimonies and for us, these videos are testimonies. They're testimonies of civilians in Gaza who take enormous risk in, in filming those clips uh, because the open fire regulation of the Israeli army is sure to kill anyone who films uh, soldiers. Um, so this is a way of honoring evidence that is delivered under quite 
um, perilous circumstances. Just to, to, to show you the, the, the amount of work it takes um, to do this thing, this is uh, in fact the, uh, our, a small section of our working drawing where you see how we analyze the location of each one of those bombs. I showed it to you for one, there were 80 something one ton bombs landing on Rafa this, that day. This is a moderate success in which the Israeli, finally, Israeli military citing issues in international law, of course not citing this amnesty report that we've done, uh, retracted the very order that led to that um, kind of attack that day. Back somewhere else, we're in the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean is a place that is highly contested now uh, because of the Europe's, uh, the EU decision to stem the flow of migrants uh, into Europe and one of the ways in which they stem this migration is to criminalize the rescue NGOs that operate quite heroically in the sea in saving uh, sub-Saharan Af uh, African migrants that are in distress in the ocean and bring them to European shores. Europe wants the Libyan Coast Guard to intercept those people and take them and bring them back to Libya where they're held in camps that um, it would not be exaggeration to call concentration camps. Uh, some, some was documented sort of slavery, uh, enormous abuses, etc. Uh, so criminalizing the NGOs uh, and the attempt to counter it is a work that the affiliate group of ours, uh, Forensic Oceanography, uh, is undertaking. And together we, we have analyzed that statement. So here you have the Italian prosecutor. I don't know if anyone reads Italian here and um, claim that this image shows uh, an NGO group on this dinghy towing a migrant, an empty migrant boat and bringing it back to the European, to the Libyan coast, presumably to help people smugglers bring more people. So that's a serious accusation. But there is nothing in this image, there's nothing in this image that shows you in which direction they're towing. So why are they saying they're towing that towards the Libyan coast? Uh, in fact, there is uh, one um, thing that can give away the direction. And that's the, 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 the waves. We can see the waves and we can motion track them and we can see in which direction the waves are going. And we start modeling, it takes a long time, but we start modeling the, the water itself, the surface of the water contain a lot of information. And uh, looking at the waves um, and the direction is obviously a function of the wind during that day. And information about the wind is available, it's open source, you can go online and get historical meteorological data, uh, which we do and have. And we see that the wind, the direction of the wind, i.e. the direction of the wave, would have the boat being towed the opposite direction, away from the Libyan coast. So this becomes an important evidence. Do you think it helps? No, because the ability of states to determine what they want to prove initially, to insist that, that what they've done uh, is more powerful uh, somehow than our attempt um, to do that, to, to, to show to the contrary. But this is, we, we will still insist on showing the truth because finally those things will come to light. Uh, another controversial case uh, we recently engaged with uh, is a commission we've done for the New York Times, uh, which is um, an attempt to prove uh, that chemical strike has happened in Duma on the 7th of April of this year. Um, there was a lot of contestation, a lot of fake news accusation about it. But there was a lot of images. Here, for example, the Russian media, this is a Russian media, uh, uh, this, this image is from Russian media. They were the only ones allowed on site by the Syrian regime. And this guy is uh, saying that rebels wanting uh, to 
provoke American retaliation. There was American and European retaliation for that strike. Uh, that rebels simply took those uh, canisters and placed them on site. And so the argument is whether that chlorine canister, which is no, there's no debate of whether this is chlorine canister or not, has arrived from the air, and the air is exclusively controlled by the Russians and the Syrians, or was brought from the ground, which was controlled by rebels. So you need to start looking uh, at the evidence. And that was published, uh, you know, the, uh, I urge you to go and um, So we see, we see several things on the images that the Russians themselves have taken that disprove what the Russians themselves have said on those images. It's like the Israeli thermal imaging thing. For example, we see a certain shipping above that is in line with a, with a, with a, with a ground impact uh, that demonstrate for us that this um, has at least arrived from above the balcony, that power pack. Uh, then we're looking at other images, we're locating other elements within the video. Uh, we're seeing uh, a towel there, uh, we're seeing the remains of a fence. We measure that fence, and although we don't know for sure, it is exactly the dimension, the length of the, uh, of the balcony, so it could have been from above. Then we find this crumbled object within the rubble, and see that it fits. And this is this instrument is very important because it weaponizes the canister. It's a kind of fence that are used to throw it from uh, planes. Uh, then we saw those. We, we identified those wheels, and we see on open source here the Syrian soldiers with exactly the same wheels in there. And more, more interestingly, we take several images of that canister from different directions. And we are able to build a 3D model out of it. Here's the model. And we can look at it very, very carefully as an object of inscription. What, what does the object itself, the canister, tell us? Uh, we see the first thing is the charring on top of the um, canister. And this we compare to other images found online, again on the Bellingcat website where we see charring uh, at the edge of no non structure on this canister. This is the explosive head that is removing the nozzle. We see a certain uh, indentation and deformation on the surface of the, of the canister that are conducive with um, an impact, a strong impact. What, what made this impact is quite sturdy Thing. But most importantly, we could see that the fence mashing match precisely a certain uh, marking on the uh, surface of the canister itself. So is that a mark of impact by which the canister has actually fallen, taken the fence from above in high speed and got imprinted uh, on it? Most interestingly, we start seeing draining marks. Uh, on the facade, but they are pointing upwards, right? Things don't drain in that direction, they drain down. That tells us something quite disturbing, that the evidence has been tampered with. Maybe, we don't know by whom, somebody has taken that canister and turned it around, and the act of turning it around exposed that. So, it might be that the rebels were actually tampering with the evidence, but we can confirm that that canister has come from above. So in a certain sense, uh, you have... Uh, we don't know who tampered with this evidence. Here is a very early image that shows the canister. I just, I'm showing you this, this work simply in order for you to see the kind of the amount, of the attention given to reading inscriptions uh, left on, on materials. This is site number two, and um, etc. How long do I have still, Faris? Another ten minutes. Um, one of our uh, 
you know, in Europe, better known investigation has had to do with the uh, NSU killing. If there are 